Scripture memory verse, uh, Galatians 5, 1. Stand therefore in the liberty in which Christ has made you free, and do not be entangled again in a yoke of bondage. Galatians 5, 1. Anybody else committed it to memory? I didn't commit it to memory, but I'll read it. That would be great. Galatians 5, 1. In the freedom with which... Messiah has made us free, stand firm, then do not again be held with the yoke of slavery. Hmm. Oh, Galatians 5 1. <laughs> Good job. Call him out. <laughs> Good job. Anybody else? Galatians 5 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. Galatians 5 1. We would have had that, wouldn't you? I would. Yeah. <laughs> We've been working all week. <laughs> of course, the book of Galatians is written as a whole, written to the region of Galatia, where Judaizers were, were hitting pretty hard. And the Judaizers were always teaching that. You had to keep the Jewish law also to be saved and to believe in Christ. I mean, they taught some other things, but mainly that you were supposed to keep the Jewish law and believe in Christ to be saved. And so they're hitting really hard. And, you know, I don't know if you remember, but, but he already told them in, in chapter 3, 1, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should obey, or that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. So he's doing a lot of correcting because we need to see this in the church even today that we look to so many things as opposed to looking to just the finished works of Jesus Christ. And, and the point of it is to stand. Stand in what? Stand in Christ. That's, that's our position is we don't fight for victory, we fight from victory. We're supposed to stand still in the salvation of the Lord. And, and it's so important that we understand that standing is a stationary position of perseverance. You're standing no matter what comes, no, what, no matter what new thought, no matter what new music, no matter what new ideas, no matter what new teaching, if it doesn't line up with the gospel of Jesus Christ, Christ crucified, and that he paid with his blood for the full sin nature to anyone who will believe, then, then, then you want to cast it out. You don't want to be bewitched by it. You don't want to say, oh, that sounds better than the other gospel. You don't want to say, oh, yeah, this looks good. You know, some of the things that are going on in the church today, I mean, we, have, we, we put ourselves back under rules, under laws, under, under denominational uh, uh, tradition. We put ourselves back into, under, under uh, uh, um, and don't get me wrong, underneath dress codes and, and things that are supposed to look like this and this and this to be church. Well, buildings are not the church. It's the people. It's people that are set free and have liberty in Christ Jesus. And so then we hear, oh my goodness, don't judge me. I'm free in Christ. I can do what I want. I have liberty to do what I want. Not all, I mean, you know, and then they'll quote the verse from Paul that says, uh, um, well, I thought I knew what the verse was. Um, the one that says, um, I am free to do all things. Not all oh, not all things are profitable. That's it. That's what I was thinking of. Uh, I, you, you know, you can do all things, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. There it is. I was trying to find it. My brain lost it. So listen, don't you want to profit in Christ? Aren't we supposed to be profited in Christ? In fact, in 419, he says this. He says, my little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. You see, we are set free. We've been given liberty. We're supposed to stand in it. And listen, this liberty and free, they're, the, they're from the same word. They're, they're from a word that means to not be a slave to, to be exempt from, to be free. Liberty means freedom, not to be a slave. And then free means to liberate. We have liberty. We have been delivered. We've been made free in Christ. And what Christ has set free is free indeed. But we haven't been set free 
to go live in a selfish life, to go live for ourselves, to go back into sin and do whatever we want. We haven't been set free to do anything except turn our hearts toward being conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. To, to, to walk in the Spirit so that we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. We've been set free to become children of God who obey the law of God and the work of God and the will of God and want to live in the kingdom of God. We haven't been set free to run about and do whatever we want, but that's exactly what's going on in much of the church today. We, we say a prayer, we say I'm saved, we lead people to, to false conversion, and then they go back doing all the other things that they do, and they use that, they're so busy sorting their socks, they can't come to church, they can't grow in Christ, they got to take their kids to everything that's going on, and they can't surrender to the work of God. And they say, don't judge me, because I can do these things. Well, listen, all I know is Paul is writing this letter and saying they're bewitched. Paul is writing this letter and saying, don't be entangled again with this false doctrine because you may lose Christ if you follow this. And really, that's the point he's trying to drive at. Have you, are you really in Christ if the Holy Spirit takes that which is Christ and gives it to you to conform you into the image of Christ, that you're supposed to be growing into the, to the love of God? And then we go back into this yoke of bondage, whether it be, whether it be back under the law, like I'm going to start doing what uh, uh, other people had done under law, the festivals or the feast or, or, or looking at these things for my salvation, or whether it be something like legalism, which is in the church, where if I dress this way, if I act this way, if I go to Bible study, I'm going to be saved. If I go to church and volunteer, I'm going to be saved. If I do works, I'm going to be saved. And we begin to judge our salvation on what we do other than by the grace of God, the liberty where Christ set us free and only his finished works. If you want to do the work of God, believe in whom God has sent. John 6, 29. That's the only way to be saved. It's by grace through faith. It's not of yourself. It's not of works, lest any man would boast. But if we are truly saved, there is works. Because James says, uh, faith without works is not true saving faith at all. If you're not going to come and look to work your way in, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. There still is the call to follow God. Because what did he do? Christ came and he set us free from the penalty of sin, death. And he set us free from the power of sin. So that it doesn't have to rule in our mortal bodies, in our physical flesh. Because we can listen to the Holy Spirit and follow God. We can say no and crucify the selfish nature crucify the flesh, put it in the grave with Christ, and set our eyes and our affections on heavenly things and begin to do what the Spirit of God wants us to do. And what's the Spirit doing? Conforming us into the image of Jesus Christ. Doing the will of God. It's the ministry of reconciliation. The Holy Spirit is in the world right now convicting of sin and righteousness and judgment. That we're all sinners we can become righteous by imputed righteousness from Christ, justification, and there's going to be a judgment. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And so we don't want to think that our liberty gives us permission to go back to our selfish life to go back to rules or to go back to anything that we want to do. We've been set free so that we can listen to God's word, so that we can walk in the spirit and trust the Holy Spirit, so that we become dependent upon God and his power, upon his spirit and his word, his will, his ways in order to direct our lives. But we love to put ourselves back under, if I do this, this, and this, I'll be okay. This, this, and this. I'm not leaving out the fact that if you are saved by grace because of Jesus' blood, then that God calls you into sanctification. So you need to be in the word, prayer, and fellowship. It's what grows you. It's what the Holy Spirit wants to, to lead you through as he washes you and cleanses you. But we don't want to go back underneath bondage and say, I'm saved by obeying. I'm saved because I'm obeying. You always want to keep in your heart that it's all God. 
It's all Christ. It's all, our all in all is Him. When something happens and you're doing well, it's because of Christ. Something happens and you're doing bad, it's because of Christ. You're still in Christ. He still loves you. He's still working all things out for good for those who love Him and are called according to His purposes. And you're still free to follow close behind. Do you remember this story? Um, and it is a story. It's not a testimony, uh, but it's a story of Abraham Lincoln. And he was passing through a town and they were doing a slave auction. And he stopped and bid. And he bought this young lady. And she come over to him and he says, you're free. She says, what do you mean free? He says, you're free to go wherever you want. She's like, I'm free to go everywhere I want. He said, yeah, go, you're free. I'm setting you free. She goes, I can do whatever I want to do. Yes, you're free, go. She said, I want to go with you. Because that's the type of freedom we want to follow. Christ set us free from the bondage of sin. He set us free from the law who could never save us. It was just a parent or a pedagogist, a teacher, to show us that we need Christ. And he set us free, so we should want to go with him. We should turn our hearts toward home. We should say, you're right, Lord Jesus, and I'm free to follow you. Because the more you follow him and you're in the way with him, the more you're going to learn who he is and how we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to do. So we're set free, and not to be free means to deliver from the sin nature, deliver from the selfish, deliver and make us free, and not to be entangled. This is, this is interesting. The word means to hold in or upon. So it holds you in or it's upon you. To ensnare you. It actually can be translated to keep a grudge. Do you know that keeping a grudge, being mad at somebody, or to have a quarrel against somebody without cleaning it up, do you know that that can become bitterness in your heart and it can put you back in bondage? It can put you back in sin. We're supposed to give grace and mercy. We're supposed to forgive as we've been forgiven. But when we begin to keep those grudges and have those quarrels against, instead of praying for our enemies and praying for those who spitefully use us as we've been <coughs> commanded, it ensnares us, it entangles us, and it puts us back into a selfish life. And, and you know why? You might not follow rules. You might not think you're saved because of the things you do. But are you in bondage to self? See, a lot of people are in bondage to self. Oh, I said a prayer, I'm saved. But you're saved to do whatever you want. And you get mad and you hold a grudge if people don't do what you want to do. If God doesn't do what you wanted to do, now you're mad at God. And, you, and we don't understand that He is changing us into His image. He has bought us with His blood. He wants us to be like His Son who would lay down everything for others. Every day, and in fact, his son was innocent. So he made us innocent, sinless, just as if we never sinned. And he asked us to do the same thing, follow the example. And don't be put back into some type of bondage and be entangled and ensnared by the devil and think that we are okay when we've actually put a yoke on a bondage. And that yoke, again, Christ said, come to me. Oh, you are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn from me. Don't learn from these other things. Don't learn from yourself. I mean, because that's really, I'm, I, I, we were looking at some of the orthodox stuff. I mean, just the orthodoxy. And, and, I, and I said to somebody, listen, why would I want to not learn from the scriptures? And I would want to learn from church fathers before I would learn from the scriptures. Now, I don't understand all of orthodoxy. But there was some concern that, that there was books left out of the Bible, some concern that some of them weren't translated properly, and they would rather listen to a church father or somebody who was there and wrote another book <laughs> than trust that God could get you a book that would show you his will. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I think I'm going to put hang my stuff on a peg that says, I trust that God can get me his Bible and his will through his Bible before I trust a man that's going to tell me God's will because of their tradition, because of what they wanted to do in church then. We just have to be very careful. Now, I don't want to go too far there, but there's so many things that we do 
and we entangle ourselves instead of just believing the simple truth that Christ died and paid for our sin and he set us free. And we're free to follow him. And if we would just follow him, we wouldn't put ourselves back in bondage. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we just want to follow that. Anybody else want to share the scripture? Stand fast, therefore. Again. Yes, with a yoke of bondage. Notice again. Now I want I want you to understand this. Listen to me, because when you read it, notice it says again. Good job, sweetheart. Notice it says again. We were in this yoke of bondage, set free by believing in Christ, and therefore it is possible for people to go back to it again. To be in it again. I mean, or why would the verse read like this? Why would it say again? <laughs> so you can go backward instead of forward in the freedom that Christ has set us free in. If you look back at who you were, if you start going back into your selfish life, your selfish desires, the way you want to live, the way you want to do things, instead of continuing to humble yourself so that God can lift you up. And really that's what it's all about is humility. If we bow down to God's government, to God's word, to God's will, to God's kingdom and his ways and his blood and the provision for our sin nature, and we just bow down to what God says, then that's called humility. That's what Christ did. And he's lifted up with the name above all names. And that's what we actually want to be like is Christ. That's what the Spirit is doing, birthing Christ in us. And we want to stand fast. We want to persevere in this. I mean, really, because everything is trying to deceive you into following something else. Because think about it. Even at, when they were at Mount Sinai, they wanted a law. They wanted, they just give me some rules. Have you ever felt that way? Boy, if, it was, if I could just do it, I'd get it done. If I could just take a class, pass it with an A, we'd be done. But it's a life of faith trusting in God, building this relationship for the rest of your life, you get the privilege of coming boldly to the throne of grace and talking to the creator of the universe and allowing him to sow into your life and you're yoked with him and he's training and teaching and building in our hearts and making us more like him. Or we can resist him. We can allow the yoke of bondage to come upon us and we can pretend and follow rules and we can look like the rest of the church. We can look like the, the visible church and yet inside, just like the Pharisees, have hearts uh, that are like ravenous wolves. Ha have hearts just like false prophets that are ravenous wolves that we talked about last week. Because if we don't stand fast in this liberty and begin to follow Christ, then our hearts do not change. They stay the same. Anybody else? In John 8, 31 and 32, Jesus said to the Jews who believed, If you abide in my word, you are my learners, my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And that's what we want. Anytime we go back to somebody else's traditions, standards, basic principles of this world, flesh, or some good argument in intellect, it puts us back in bondage. We want the simple word of God, and we want to continue to stand and persevere in it. Stand means to be stationary. Stand. Are you standing Therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made you free, or are you listening to some other voice, some other way? Even culture entity, that's what I call it. Culture entity is giving us another way to look 
We're retraining pastors. We're retraining youth leaders. We're retraining the church. We're trying to make it politically correct and, 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 and palatable for the world. We need to wake up to the falsehoods of these teachings or we will be taking a yoke of bondage and be entangled. It's the grace of God. By faith in God. And the complete work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And that should always be in the front. If God gives you a gift, use it for the glory of God. But remember, it's not your work. It's his work in you, which he's so mightily doing if we allow him to. We have to remember whose work it is. If anything good comes out of our life, we have to remember it's because of the liberty that God has given us through the blood of Jesus. And we stand in that and give the glory to God. Notice in verse 7, he says, you ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? See, he's not saying to begin to disobey. He's not saying that you can live any way you want, as much of the church thinks today. But when, you, when you're bought with the blood of Jesus, you begin to follow the one who bought you and paid for you, set you free to follow him. And where's he at? Seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. That's where our eyes should be. That's where our affections should be. That's where our hope is at. That's where our kingdom is at. So everything that we do should be about that. And what he's called us to do in that kingdom is the ministry of reconciliation of souls. And when people see us standing fast in the liberty that we have given and looking forward to growing in Christ... Then they see a true living God. But you know what's easy for people? It's easier for us to follow the people that are going and doing their own thing. Well, they say they're Christian and they're Christians. Listen, once again, there's going to be few. I can teach on this for hours and talk about it for hours. He actually had just said in chapter 4, quoting Isaiah 54, 1, and he compared it to the, 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 the bond woman and the free woman. Hagar and Sarah. And listen to me. Those in grace are free. They have a husband. Christ is their husband. Just as Sarah had a husband who was Abraham. But the bondwoman that they had uh, Ishmael in the flesh was, was, was not free. He was a slave still. No husband. And we're not going to be set free if we go back to the law and go back to that type of bondwoman and that slavery. But if we keep looking to Christ and to his grace and his blood, we'll be set free. And the funny part is, is it actually does, it says that, uh, let's just read it. It's 426, but the, uh, 427, I'm sorry. For it is written, rejoice, O barren, you who do not bear, Break forth and shout. See, we're supposed to be happy about that. I'm like, what? You who are not in labor. For the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. Notice that. Under law, under rules, under works. Look at all of your false religions. They all look to works. And there's far more children in that than those under grace. Far more. It goes right back to what we had last week, where the, the broad way is where people are going, but there's few in the narrow way. Because we have to stand fast in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. And there's few who are doing that because they're following those who are following the other ways, the other religions, the other direction of selfishness i said a prayer i'm a christian don't judge me i can go do what i want to do listen not legalism not legalism it's sanctification <coughs> always on the grow becoming like christ so you're turning your heart toward home 
You're listening to the work of the Spirit, and the Spirit is saying no. The Spirit is saying go this way. And the Spirit is always reproving and correcting and changing you into the image of Christ. But when we say, I'm Christian, don't judge me. I'm going to go do what I want to do over here. You're resisting the work of the Holy Spirit. And you put yourself back under uh, benchmarks, we might say, or things that make you feel like you're saved when you're really resisting the work of the Holy Spirit. Well, I go to church on Sunday and I read my Bible this week. Those are not salvatory. Those are sanctification. Salvatory is the blood of Jesus and the blood of Jesus alone. And when we begin to look to any other work, we're putting ourselves back, training our heart to look at bondage things. Okay. So stand fast. Stand fast. It's interesting. You know what the word fast means? Listen to this. I, I, I'm sorry. I meant to tell you that. It's the same word for fasting. It's the same word for abstinence. For a lack of food. So stand fast in Christ's liberty, but fast all the rest of it. Stay away from it. It's not good for you. Stand in Christ. Fast the world. Fast the bondage. Fast the rules. And any legalism that you think you need to do to be saved. Next week... Give me a minute. My brain went dead. What verse did I decide I was going to give? Next week. <laughs> oh my goodness. <coughs> I'm tired. I had a verse I was going to give and my brain, I didn't write it down like I typically do right here. Where's the verse at? Colossians. 2, 9, and 10. Is that it? Colossians 2, 9, and 10. Yes. That's it. Write it down next time, Greg. Colossians 2, 9, and 10. For you in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Two small verses that are huge in our identity in Christ. Colossians 2, 9, and 10. For next week, write it down. Meditate on it. Understand who you are in Christ. Understand that in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And that we are going to be complete in Him. Okay? Amen. Amen.